JB here from Truth Be Told. I'm sitting with International T <laughs> out the Magnolia, man, trying to get in contact with him. We're trying to get out with him. It's like trying to get, get in contact with the president or something, man. You got to change your name Presidential T, man. <laughs> you know, last time I was out here, we had a little, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, this time I was out here, but, you know, we, we made a habit. You yeah. had it now. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out here, bro, and shedding light on, you know, what's going on out here. Nah, for sure. All this from out here, so, you know, I'm glad we was able to make it happen, too. For sure, you know, it's long overdue. Facts. Um, Facts. But, you know, this is the first time on a platform. Uh, so, you know, I like to take it from the beginning and, uh, you know, the story from the beginning. So, you know, you from from the Magnolia. Yeah, Magnolia Project. I ain't started there. I started on 7th Street. Okay. And then, then my mind wound up moving in the Magnolia Projects. Okay. How old were you when you moved in Magnolia? Uh, I think we were about seven. Seven years old. My oldest brother was probably about ten. How many uh, brothers you got? Oh my God! I got two brothers on my mama's side, one brother on my dad's side. Okay, you got a um a brother. Is he older brother? Um, older window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because you know. Seeing him on like hood to hood back in the day with the dogs, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah I, I'm a, then I think he was in a slow motion video too, yeah, with the dogs, yeah. I'm like, man, did, did, does he ever smile? That nigga no, look mad, that nigga look, and that's the thing. Why so many people be like, man, why your brother so mean, man? You don't smile, bro. Yeah. I don't know why you don't, but he a jokester though, yeah. He's a real clown though, like joking around, but he don't be smiling too much. Yeah, man. Every time I see that nigga, got a mug on his face. I'm like, yeah, yeah. everybody see that about that boy too. <laughs> oh, that's what's up, though. So tell me what it was like uh, for you uh, growing up in the Magnolia at a young age. Before this is like before you was off the porch or anything. Uh, it was fun, man. Everybody outside, you know, basketball court and I would court way. You know, it was just fun running around, being a kid, man. Bikes, friends, school. You know, like I said, I, you know, I wouldn't want to do it nowhere else. Right. If I had a chance to do it over, I'll do it there again. You know what I'm saying? So. So what uh, what side did you grow up on? Uh, I was on the new side. New side. Yeah, Bell. I started on Belmont Magnolia. Oh, okay. Twenty seven hundred Belmont. That's where we started. That's the new side, across from Tom the Farm mm. Elementary School. Okay. So coming up on that new side at a young age, um, what are some things that you would get into as you know as a young kid, like sports and all that? Uh, we played basketball, man. You wouldn't believe we used to make a goal off a crate. Mm -hmm. You you probably know, cut the bottom of the crate off. Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man. We used to have a time our life with that before they before they put the uh, the real basketball goals up. Uh, the crate cool can. You heard of cool can? Mm -hmm. Three cans lined up, stick on each end. Throw the tennis ball, knock the can down, the out. You hit it, tap. Cool can was a real good game. You know, that's it, bro. It just right. it stayed out the way of the, cause coming up, bro. I wasn't off the porch, but you saw a lot of off the porch activity. You know what I'm saying? So who were some of your, like your, uh, your your friends growing up at a young age? Anybody that? Uh, I that started out. Me and Sonny was real cool. Sonny, George, George Jones, me and him was real cool. We went to uh, Wilson together. That was my partner. We was in school. Oh. Uh, Man, that's a, that's a wild bag, boy. Yeah. Uh, that's the only guy I used to be like running with back then, okay. like young then. But then he evolved a little faster than me. Mm -hmm. So we separated, you know what I'm saying? So my mom was real strict, though. You know, we couldn't go outside till she come home. Okay. You know, from her job, stuff like that. So we was limited because of the stuff that was outside. She wanted to be there to watch us, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, so speak on that Um, as far as you know, your mom being strict, do you think that that was like beneficial to how you was coming up so you wouldn't get in as much trouble or did it make you want to go outside even more? Like, man, I mean, like did you used to sneak out or be out while she wasn't No, my around? brother did. Okay. My brother was the, the wild one, like used to get out of whatever. I was the game head, play Contra. And, you know, I knew she kept us inside for a reason because it was dangerous outside, you know, so at a young age, I didn't contest it. You know, I just stayed inside. And went went behind the roof, went by the rules, but I knew, you know, I was uh seven enough to know why she was doing it. So them them um early activities, as far as you say, you used to see a lot of off the porch activity before you was off the porch. Um, what were some things that you would see? And did, at the time, did you did you think it, that it was did, was it normal to you at the time? And that's the crazy part. Yeah, like it just became normal. I done saw strong arms, I done saw armed robbers, I done saw murders, I done saw, 
you know, uh, uh, every little bit of that side, you know what I'm saying? And, and now that I think about, it made that normal to us, you know what I'm saying? Even now, you know, and it was normal, like, oh, shots rang out, you know, to hit the floor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, so it was just a normal routine, banged up. up. So at a young age, if you said, when you see these armed robberies or these murders, did it, what type of effect did it have on you? I ain't gonna lie, it just, it just made me know that back there, if you outside, this what comes with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it just was, it ain't no limit. So once you step out there, you gotta be willing to, you know, accept all that that comes with it. You know what I'm saying? So. It just made me aware of things that could happen. You know, friends did it to friends, partners did it to partners, so it just made me, you know, literal of a lot of things. Just seeing it. I'm glad I did, man, because it really, it really, like, kept me grounded. You know what I'm saying? Knowing you got one life to live, so your moves would be very calculated, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. life was getting lost at a rapid rate, like, for nothing, like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So... Yeah, I did, I did pick up from it and, and learn how to maneuver mm -hmm. in the jungle by watching the jungle, you know? Right. So when you was coming up, um, who were some of the names that was ringing um, that you would hear a lot that was getting into Dizzy. a lot? Yeah, like, uh, like shout out Tippy, uh, Busy, rest in peace, Eric Maurice. Uh, Funk and Fool, Lad Lad, Kenny Black, uh, Claw, they had some hounds back then. Chill, Will, Gangster, Stone, uh, Doom and Sterling. Oh man, it was just. Yeah, that, and that's the thing about it. It wasn't no one person running everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't care how bad you were, somebody was gonna contest you if it came to it, you know what I'm saying? So, just like, man, all the names you hear about, you know. I watched him come up, probably had a relationship with him. I spoke with him before, you know? Right. So, um, did that, did their lifestyle kind of influence you on how you wanted to move? Or did you, did that shy, shy you away from it? Shout out Skip Boo, man. You know, my dog, man. Like, they set the tone with me. Like, him doing, uh, wow. You know, shout out them all. But, you know, I, I really fuck with Skip. And I saw the way that they did certain things and it made me want to do that. You know what I'm saying? They were making like 20 racks a day. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, damn, you know. <laughs> they said that and then, you know, a lot of people yeah. was calling Cap about that too, though. But yeah. you've seen it for your own. I see. I made a $1,000 a day off the traffic selling nickel bags a week. I seen mm -hmm. this. I used to be on the porch when Bloodhound and, 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 and Sarge come through the cut. Doing it, doing it was the ring leader. He'll come through the cut, he'll be like, say T, tell them niggas keep it in the street. Don't play the police, you know, he'll go in Octavia house, you know what I'm saying? As soon as he go in the, the police coming through the cut. So I was like actually on the porch watching that happen, you know what I'm saying? If niggas say that was Cap, they probably was in jail and they wasn't around, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't no Cap, man, garbage bags of money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I salute, man, shout out to Skip, man, my dog, man, I'm fucking Skip. So would you say like you came up under doing e them or? Not under them, like just say uh, they era was before me. Okay. So uh, while I'm on what I'm on, they was on what they on, but I'm watching. Mm -hmm. You know, Dooney was originally out of 17. He got a G pass from Gangster, mm -hmm. And when stoned them and was able to hang, you know, back there, you know, just like it was his. So just watching whoever made sense to me. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't watching the crash dummies up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Watching the dudes who was raking in that bread, you know what I'm saying? And standing on business too, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, you know. So, go ahead. Skidding them had a big influence on uh, the pad I chose. Okay, so yeah, at what point did you, what was it that, that made you choose that path? Was it like you was tired of asking mom for money? Or? No, well I was already working at Emeralds. I wasn't new, I wasn't lazy, you know what I'm saying? I, I was already out the house. When I was in John Mack, I had a job at Emerald. I was getting paid every week, you know what I'm saying? So it was just evolving one more, you know what I'm saying? Then when I went to weed, then when I saw that, I said, damn, if you're doing something for money, that's just common sense. 20 racks a day, 30 racks a day, that's the feel I need to be in, you know what I'm saying? And just, that's, it just me one more money. So did you uh, finish high school? No, nah, I dropped down to 12th grade. Yeah, I had a son. 
Oh, okay, okay. I had my little boy. Shout out to her. Junior, I had my son, so I dropped out of 12 years. But I did my GED in, uh, in jail, in the okay. reentry program. All right, cool. Um, So, at what age or like what grade did, would you say you jumped off the porch? Um, I was a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. Miles, I didn't play that shit. I was a late bloomer. I probably jumped off the porch like about 17, 18. Mm -hmm. And, and 17, I was working then, so I was doing both actually. You know, I was uh, uh, working at Emeralds and selling weed. But when I really jumped off the pool full fledged into what I was probably like about 20 hmm. when I made that decision just to jump. So, was music always a thing to you even back then? I was I was a good freestyler. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to ride around me and my cousin Ryan and them used to get in the van, like partners I used to work with it was one of them was my cousin. We used to just ride around the van and freestyle and play with it, you know what I'm saying? I was always musically inclined, you know what I'm saying, but I wasn't as serious as I was about it. Mm -hmm. Now, you know. So did you uh who were some of the artists that you that you looked up to back then or that you that you like to listen to? Oh uh, yeah, man, I used, I used to listen to uh, Juvia Slim. A-Ball, MJG, Taylor, uh, Lil UGK, uh, a lot of sound artists too. We mm -hmm. wasn't really up on no, um, I'm not artists like that, you know what I'm saying? But for all this dinner, it was like, Slim. And then we had good guys from down here too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Magnolia Slim was the man down here, Juvie. I not listen to Wayne too much. Um, you ain't listen to Wayne? Not too much. I ain't listen to Wayne. You know, Wayne was a kid. Right, 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 right. So He made good music, don't right. get me wrong, but when you wake up in the morning and you go and get in that vibe, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to play a little something different. But yeah, a few Memphis uh, artists, you know what I'm saying? And BG. Did you yeah, BG? Yeah, I like the BG. I like the BG. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, I like the oh, BG. Right. So, you know, you had your um, own artists, like you mentioned, Slim, Juvie. Yeah, Turk. They all out the Magnolia. Turk. I ain't really listen to Turk. You ain't listen to Turk. No. So did you used to see them around though? Yeah, yeah, I used to see them around a lot. Okay. Uh, Slim, Slim was around. Slim was just a hood, and then Slim, you gonna see Slim. Juve was on the other side with Kirby, and them. You know, I ain't see him too much. Cause he was off the, the old side. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Turk was off the old side. You know what I'm saying? But it all came. You know, they shot baller blocking. Everything was in our, you know, close vicinity, you know what I'm saying? So I used to see them on the regular then on tour or whatever, you know, they'll be in the project. Right, so all them, all them videos, you know, like the high, high video, yeah. um, you know, they, they was back in the Magnolia for like on BT a few times. Yeah. Were you ever out there for these? Um, yeah, well, uh, high, high, I don't remember what year it was. I don't really think I was active then. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably was still on the porch. I don't remember what year how it was. I it like was shot in a, It was shot in our Kowi, hmm. in Belmont Kowi. Matter of fact, I was in California. Hmm. My mom sent me to California. That's that's what I did. My mom sent me to California because I was having all kind of trouble in school down here. So I went to go stay with my grandma for my 19th grade year. I went to Manuel Senior High School in California. So when Julie was doing that, I was in Cali. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you was in Cali pretty much for that for that that cash money like. Nah, I came back. I okay. came when I came back. I did 19th grade. I came back. Uh, I don't, and that's crazy when you say that. I remember Drew was shooting in the Kobe, but I don't remember. That's why I figured I really had to be in Cali, but I wasn't there for him. But all the rest of them, I was there. Uh, need a hot girl. Mm -hmm. I back that ass up, the baller block, you know, the know you, uh, whatever, know you clap, whatever. I just wasn't into getting on the camera. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like back then, I just wasn't into getting on the camera, but I witnessed a few of them. What happened to that boy? I used to go on baby bus and whoop him on the mat, and I was real good on Madden too. Oh, yeah. So I used to go on that better rack, you know, C2 and them bad Mario from the squad. I used to play them niggas for big money on baby bus when they used to be back there. You know what I'm saying? But after, huh? I was, I was. I saw a lot of more videos after her, but I can't remember where I was for. Right. For her. So would you say like back then, like you say, you was on the bus and all that. A lot of people say uh, Baby showed a lot of love to to the neighborhood and to you know people in the neighborhood as far as just being able to 
because you know a lot of people at, at, at his stature wouldn't even get let's say not even get off the bus and even right. talk to anybody you know but he was they say he was one pretty much with the people he out there mingling with the people talking to the people giving money out like yeah he, was, he had to though because he was claiming our hood you can't he, baby not from the magnolia baby out valens vl so if you coming back there in our project you gotta show love you can't come back there and sit on the bus ask shit and you trying to shoot a video back here so now nah, he he was a mingler he would get out of you know what i'm saying because in order for him to come back there he had to be attached to real street niggas stone you can see who he had around him you know what i'm saying he had giant niggas around him you know what i'm saying so yeah he he, he a mingle he had no problem with mingle oh all right that's what's up um so to you uh being off the porch so you said you was about 17 but then officially like around 20 years 20, old yeah um what was what were some of the things that kind of got you caught up in the streets when you was out there uh, full time? Uh, just my name used to ring, man, like crazy. Like I don't know, I don't know what it used to be, but it used to just be T T T T T T T. I I mean I got some of the episode police used used to pull me over, and uh, it'd be like eight people on the call, you know, and they taking everybody IDs. So this say they coming from this way. I'm the full person coming from this way. See, when they get to me, the police will be behind me telling the other police, like, look at the ID, right? They give everybody else their ID. They don't want nobody else, no. I'm like, well, my ID don't know. You stay here, Mr. Young. So it was just, I, I had a real problem with the police because they just, I don't know what it was. They just used to always just, you know what I'm saying? I got 83 arrests. Damn. 13 heroin arrests. Two convictions, you know what I'm saying? So we're just getting to the point where, like, they used to just push it on me, pull up, oh, you T, come on. Pull up, I mean, my yacht and me from the snowball stand, get in the back of the car, bring me the Sarge in 6th District, I'm at the top of the chalkboard. He talking to me like, man, this phone rang. You know, it used to be some wild shit, like this phone rang, that's my rat phone. They calling about you, you see what I'm saying, you know. Cause I don't give do a fuck with niggas, I used to wreak havoc back there, like just out thinking the police, cause I'm in the game where you can make a thousand, uh, they can make a thousand mistakes. You can't make one, you know what I'm saying? So I was just always good at staying a step ahead. And with that being said, it led to them just being frustrated. You know what I'm saying? 13 heroin arrests. 83 arrests. 83 arrests. I mean, that that, yeah. I mean, that just sounded like they just had it after you. They did. That's what I'm saying. Once they heard T. So what, what do you think it, it was that made them just want to come after you? Was it like your name was ringing for a lot, getting a lot of money? Yeah, you know, like, how you mark your product. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like this T spot. Mm -hmm. Once it, it travels, when you get to them, oh, the guy T running. Mm -hmm. So then once they get T, like, you know what I'm saying? They was dirty, two knocks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't play by the book. So once you beat them a few times, they take that personal. You know what I'm saying? So they'll just stop and put 99 bags. I got 99 bag charges, 178 bag charges. You know, I got a few different charges. And it just got to the point where they were like, well, fuck. If we keep putting them on you, the judge gonna eventually think it's real. You see what I'm saying? Because you couldn't catch me, you know what I'm saying? So that was that was just basically it. I was more into it with the police, like, just... Because they, back then, bro, they was real serious. Narcotics was, real, was, was serious. They had... These two police, I'm telling you about, they had 85% of uptown in jail at one time. You know what I'm saying? Like real, they was real head hunters, like. And that's the um the two is a. Uh, uh, Bloodhound and Sarge. So okay. What Kyle about, Hemorrhage and Stephen Gardet, that's their real name. What about uh Curly Head? Is that Flat Top? Flat, okay. Curly Head and Flat. Well, Curly Head was in the 17. Oh, okay. He was different too. You know, whoever was dogs, they name a ring, but they gonna ring in the area that they punishing. Mm -hmm. Curly Head, Flat Top. Well, Flat Top was in the sixth district. Curly Head used to be in the uh, second district, 17. He, I heard some stories from him. He used to hide under the house for six, seven hours. When you go to get your stash, he put a handcuff on your home. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he was terrorizing over there. And we just had Sergeant Bloodhound. So you said they had 85% of uptime like about that? 85% of uptime. It was so bad. Like, their names were so bad on the rest. They would get fresh police officers to make the arrest. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So the judge wouldn't look at it like, because they was getting... Started getting a lot of their charges thrown out because they was doing dirty shit. So what? Uh, so 
Cause you know Sarge name ring a lot. You know uh, yeah. Slim rapped about him. Yeah. I want to say Jew. You might have name dropped him before. He punished Slim before. He put Slim in jail. Oh yeah. Yeah, he put dope on Slim. Slim sit on that charge too for a long time. I mm -hmm. think he was on the contract with P at the time. That's why he said uh, he put in a song. He said Sarge played it dirty. Yeah, he was locked up. Mm -hmm. So they put like eighty bags on him or something. And that's something you know because uh, I interviewed Ski Boo. I know you mentioned him earlier. And you know he did twelve years off of Planet Planet Drugs, so I know that's something that happened. Unfortunately, See, they couldn't catch him. Yeah, same people mm -hmm. couldn't catch him. They get tired of, well, we know you're doing it, but we can't catch you. Mm -hmm. Let's put this on you. You know what I mean? So all the times that um that they did plan it on you, did you ever had to sit for it? Um, no, I was always fine. I'm be honest, I was always good at keeping buying money. I knew what I was up against. I didn't want that stress to go on my mind. Mm -hmm. So I always kept a few dollars for buying money and lawyer money. So I never said, uh, let me see. I said one time when they put so many on me, the judge was like, had me under this restriction. I couldn't smoke too much. And I smoked and tried to clean out, and it didn't work. And I wound up sitting like about three months, four months mm -hmm. of that. But that was it. Like most of the time, I just buying up. So when, um, you say you don't put the stress on your mom. So when she found out that you was like all the way in the streets, you know, she tried to raise you and try to shield you from going out there. Right. How did that? How did that have an effect on like your relationship? Oh, uh, she just was honest, man. Once she, once she, once I was able to make my own decisions, and she knew the decisions I was making. She just told me two things. She was like, "Bitch, if you get out here killing people and all that, I hear your name ringing for all that shit. I'm gonna turn you in." And the drug you selling, go get you a gun. You're going to need a gun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was the two things she gave me, you know, and I just and I just ran with it, you know, from that day. So she what? couldn't hold me back, so she would just give me the best advice. Right, right, right. And she gave you some real advice, yeah, too. Yeah, she did. It <clears throat> stuck with me, too. Right. Uh, so what, your brother was uh, already out there, too? Yeah, he had already started <clears throat> up. He had cranked up. He had some friends with him that put him on. And shout out big bro, my window. He paved the way, bro. He was with, he was with everything. He put them hands on you, and he'll go to the other way. You know what I'm saying? And me following up behind him, I just took suit. You know what I'm saying? Like don't let nobody play with you. What his hands are the, is, you know what I'm saying? So shout out big bro for paving that way. You know from you know what it is. So did he uh did he try did he just show you the way or did he try to tell you to stay out the way? Nah, I I actually it's my older brother, but when. I jumped in, he couldn't tell me like stay out of the way. And I just went higher than him. Like I look, like the way I went, he didn't go. He went another way, you know what I'm saying? So he just like the same thing, just like just be careful. If he felt I was lacking on something, he told me, tighten up. You know what I'm saying? He just kept it G. <clears throat> so um you making so how much and like when your name is ringing so much obviously the cops got it out for you. Yeah. What? How much money was you making at the time? A day. A day. The most or different times? Uh, we could, cause it rung for a while. That's right. What I'm saying it ain't it just it just every time I was on the street it rung. Okay. Cause the way I did things, so it was just like I had spots that them did twenty four thousand a day. I had spots that did eighteen thousand a day, twelve. So break it down for me, cause I think that's why a lot of people think it's cat when. Uh, like I interviewed Kenny Boo before, and, you know he was running with he, he was doing the boys, and he yeah. and then he he broke it down. But a lot of people think it's cap because they just think you just make twenty four thousand and it's just all profit or whatever the case nah, is. So it's not all so if you made twenty four thousand one day, how, how how would you break that down? All right, so uh, not to get in too deep detail, I just say for instance, uh, whatever I do that day. Whatever I put together that day, it'll come up to 24. So I'll finish that. Uh, but then I'll deduct what I spent for the four things that I did to make the 24. So it'll just be like, uh, if you break it down, you'll have some deductions of who you paid and all that. But 24 just be the, the number you made that day. Uh, the expenses have to come out that. That's not after. Uh, I didn't make 24 profit. Mm -hmm. Uh, my expenses still had to come out of the 24 from what I used and who I paid to do it or move around for me. Mm -hmm. So the 24 was just a, a number on, on, as a whole. So how, how, how much would you say was profit out of that? 
Um, back then, you said probably about for about eleven racks a day was profit. Twelve racks a day was profit. It's a nice little profit right yeah, there. Yeah, that was a hell of a profit. It's far, man. It's far, man. Yeah, right, right. I don't do nothing else after that. Nah, for sure, I can see. Um, <laughs> shit. It'd be hard. It'd be hard it'd to shake that. It'd be hard, that. yeah. It'd you know be hard saying? to shake that, bro. But that that shaking it uh, determines who who lasts longer. You know, that's 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 another thing too. And I always watch other hustlers to see where they messed up at, so I don't do it. You see what I'm saying? So that that be the thing, like you know, just so did exiting. You, did you have like a team, a crew, or a squad, anything? I got trust issues, so it was just hard for me to just have that many people around me. But the team that I put together, like the work, the spots, I always took care of them real good. You see what I'm saying? The teams to switch, you know, different things. I didn't have one set crew my whole time. Okay. I gave a, I gave plenty of people jobs. So that was the good thing about me. The money was able to spread around. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody had a chance to uh, get on their feet and go do what they wanted to do through me. You know what I'm saying? So it just was never no set team, but a lot of people ate from it. Okay. Um. So you say you had trust issues. So was it things that you would see going on in the street that made you not trust people? Yeah, I just saw people sneak people that they shouldn't have sneak. <clears throat> I done saw money, you know, rule all evil, turn people to do shit they shouldn't have did. Mm -hmm. And I just I just never wanna put nobody in that uh dilemma like they gotta make a decision where they wanna do me something mm -hmm. or, or take this, you know what I'm saying? So and just with seeing that, I'm never gonna get nobody that much over me mm -hmm. to get me in that position, you see what I'm saying? No matter how much I deal with you, how much love I got for you, I'm always gonna protect myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like when you when you out here, you say you don't got no solid team or just one team. Uh, people might look at you as food. Like, did you ever run into like anybody, like any Jack boys or? Well, you know, down here, but they'll try anything. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say what they ain't gonna try. But I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a fuck with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what they think, how bad you is, how many buys you got. If you fuck with me, I'm gonna fuck with it. Point blank period. And that's all I need you to know. And they knew that about me. You know what I'm saying? That's how I can walk around with with this on at parades and do what I want because not that I'm the baddest nigga in the world, and not that I got a hundred bodies, but if you fuck with me, gonna fuck with it. Simple as that, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, they probably have people that won't do it, but they know consequences gonna be behind it. You know what I'm saying? So most people who you know who trying to they looking for weak shit. Shit they could do and don't be no repercussions behind, you know what I'm saying? So I just try to make sure they know repercussions gonna come behind me. And right. it could be me. I don't I don't I ain't worried about what nobody else gonna do. I'm I'm gonna apply the pressure. Right. So you ain't really have to worry about nothing going on as far as like people trying Well uh, in the project, you know what, we was in the Magnolia, you're not coming back though. Mm -hmm. Not no outsiders, you know what I'm saying? And for this who was back though, you know. They they probably would have tried, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, it just was. I ain't, and, and that's the crazy part. Just always by who I would come up, with, I always just carry myself like a man. No matter if, if a nigga had a hundred and I had none, you know what I'm saying? I'm a man first, you know what I'm saying? And I was respected because of that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't hold my tongue, I ain't let nobody play with me, and you know, I just was respected because of that, you know what I'm saying? They have niggas that did way more shit than me, you know what I'm saying? But. I just always was a man. That's what I think. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. So, so, uh, <clears throat> so you saying um, you never you never held your tongue. You always been outspoken. Right. Now we done seen you on the internet going back and forth with some people. Um, you know, you you was accused of you know, snitching on somebody or snitching on a, a, a situation. Right, right. Um, you know, and I, I tell people offline all the time, that whole snitching paperwork lane and who did that, who did that, is not really my, my twist. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, you got into it with, with some people about that. Yeah, yeah. What was the situation that led, not even about you getting into it with the people, just about the arrest and everything. Like, what happened with that situation? All right, so, uh, this 2012, this ain't even much the 19 federal charge. This 2012 or 10, I'm dealing with some niggas. And, uh, it's they heat. 
I'm fucking with a nigga, nigga. A mutual friend hooked us up. It's the heat. They already serving the feds. I don't know this. You see what I'm saying? But I'm dealing with them. The way that I'm conducting business with them, the people can't never pinpoint me. You see what I'm saying? So it just was like, the paperwork tell you, like unindicted co-conspirator, you know what I'm saying? So it was just to a person where, it just, you know, like, I, I couldn't even understand it because I never saw no shit like that before. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's clear as day. Nobody can't say I, I got him in jail. You see what I'm saying? Nobody can't even say I put him in jail. What was the problem with it? Just because I just was like, man, you know, niggas will see you doing good and you're not a part of it. Or you pass them up a hateful reason. You know, niggas say that, but you know, I, I, could, I couldn't even get it. You know, at, at first, I didn't even know about it. I just saw them do several times, gave them money, looked out for them. I never knew about none of this until they wanted the cop chase. You know what I'm saying? So what? So what happened? Like, did the, the cops raided the spot or something like the that? Co- well, they uh by them serving the people already, it was already hit. Mm-hmm. So when the people came, they hit my spot, but they didn't find nothing, right? So now the people trying to get one of the guys who I was dealing with to tell on me. That was the crazy part about it, cause the dude who jumped on that, I never even dealt with him. The other guy who I dealt with said, "Man, I don't know why he's doing it because the people trying to get me to tell on you." So how that makes sense? How, how am I a snitch if the people are trying to get him to co- cooperate against me? You know what I'm saying? So it was just it was just like another situation, just thinking, and they couldn't put their hands on me. So it is, it's it's so crazy out here because nigga want to see you go to jail. That's the only way you you smoke. If the feds catch you, you go to jail and lay down. If you move a certain way to beat them, they gonna say, oh he told, or he did this, or he did this. Uh, so you you're not beating the case. Yeah, what well, that case there when they came, uh, the feds came, hollered at me in Jefferson Parish, but it wasn't nothing they could, you know what I'm saying? He just asked me, oh, you've been on these, uh, every time we came watching the dude who I was dealing with, he was at these locations. I was like, oh, what that mean? I ain't, what the fuck that mean? He didn't see me give him nothing to do nothing with him, so what, you know what I'm saying? So that was the end of that. You the, know what I'm saying? The dude stood tall. The dude stood tall. You know what I'm saying? I just saw him yesterday. Uh, when they were today at the uh, the Con basketball game. I just saw him today. He howled. You know what I'm saying? He knows that he stood tall. And you know, I respect that. They, they went at him and told us to give us tea, but he, he took his liquor and laid down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that charged up. You know, when they came, I, and it's just so crazy because it was a blessing in disguise. I had lost out on like a hundred and eighty racks. In like 90 days. So when the people come, I'm dead broke. I don't have nothing. My girl paying the rent, everything, you know what I'm saying? So when they came, they found them with a scale. They tried to charge my girl with it. I took the charge. Went to JP, laid down, bind out. I was one on a gun charge and heroin charge in Orleans. I shipped them, bind it out, and I came home. They went laid down for like 10. 12 years, you know, the other guys. Oh, okay, yeah. Who were serving the people. Right. And that was the end of that one. That was like 2010. So what happened with um with, with the 180 racks in 90 days? Uh, I I lost like probably like 90 on the road. Uh, I was just taking different little hits. Hmm. I loaned my brother for the 25,000 or something like that. And it was just all happening. I can't remember everything that happened, but the biggest the biggest chunk out of it was the 90 racks on the road. How you lose that? Uh, going half with my partner on some joints, you know oh. what I'm saying? And it got hit. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, so you making all that money. So what was your thing about um, money? Would you save up a lot? Or was you like a spinner? Or how, how was that? I'm a splurger, man. I'm, yeah. I'm a splurger. But it comes so fast to where you can splurge and save. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like I was, you know what I'm saying? But I, I used to save, I used to I always used to save because I liked the money put up, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I used to save a lot too. And you had a lot, you had a lot of rush, you had people after you, so you always wanted to keep some money. Yeah, I always wanted to keep some money. And then the business we in is money. Mm-hmm. It's money comes so bad. If you do, if you do 24 a week times seven, seven times four, 28, yeah. put the eight, put the two, seven times two, 14, so that's 160 something a week. Yeah. Running through your hands, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, explain that feeling though when you when you invest ninety and then and, and they get intercepted. 
like what's you just talking to the game or like or just like <laughs> I, I, I I lost again after that I lost I just that time I just wasn't in a position to take the loss that's that's what be mattering like uh, mm -hmm. probably about in 19 when I was running I lost 100 in a mill and it didn't really affect me as much because I'm making like eighteen thousand dollars a day plus I had like two hundred racks already put up. So it didn't bother me that much. But if it was my last hundred, it would have fucked with me a little more. So you know, I was I was just able to focus on the solution with the ninety. Uh as time went by I just saw it was a blessing in disguise that the people come while I got the ninety. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling they gonna find bills and nothing that I done got from them from them serving. You see know what I'm saying? So it was just a blessing in disguise. So after that um, situation, you said that was 2012. That was 2012. So um, that that ain't that ain't scare you or nothing for you to like kind of fall back. Nah, uh, that wasn't really scary enough because you know the way I just move, the way I do things. I'm <laughs> I'm a uh, a old time told me something, bro, and it stuck with me. He said treat the game like dominoes, all money and good money. You know, play dominoes. Mm. So it was just like I always thought safety first before the money. I knew I could get some money, but I always put myself in a position where it can't, like, safety. I'm safe doing it. You know, so I never was scared. Nah, I wasn't scared coming back out because... Did you, uh... It wasn't my mistake. Like, I was getting hit off of other niggas' else. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It wasn't really my mistake. So through that time, when you jumped back out there until, until 2019, did you... You face any other like arrest in between that time? Nah, I was I moved it. Um, I came home. I probably did bad for a little while, like a year or so. Mm -hmm. And I buzzed back out and just learning. I just moved slower. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just bobbing weed, man. Like just you know when you into something, you just seeing it. You just moving a certain kind of way. So just I had to learn how to move. And I just stayed out the way for a good little while. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Plus, I never was the person doing it. It was always my name stamped on it, but I never was the person mm -hmm. doing it. You know what I'm saying? So it was easy, kind of easy for me to stay out the way because I didn't have to be outside. Right, 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 right. So at, at any point of this time, are you are you trying to like take the rap thing a little more seriously? Try to get you like fourteen. A foot out? I started Supreme Clientele after that happened, and I and I cranked back up. Fourteen, we started Supreme Clientele as a collective, like me and a uh, a group of friends at the time, partners of mine. We were sitting in there, and we came up with the label. So fourteen, I started taking it serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, just grinding, knowing I needed money to support it. You know what I'm saying? Just kept grinding. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like, so, what, what's what's like some of the ups and downs of, the, of that whole rap that rap thing? The rap game? Yeah. Well, down here, bro, it just ain't no, you know, ain't no help. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just the the ups and downs of me for this is down here. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know, Atlanta. They got people that get paid to find new artists. You know what I'm saying? We never had that. Down here, it was more people trying to get paid off of rappers. Like, just give me $100 to perform, $200 to perform. It was not never no helping the artists get to where they, the way they get and support. It's a crowd battle. Like, you know, off of sitting on the sofa, ain't doing nothing, but don't want to see you do it. Because they ain't a part of it, you know what I'm saying? So the most thing about the, the rap game, you know, up and down with it is like, just support from your city. You're going to get a lot of hate, you know what I'm saying, because what you're doing is major, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just a lot of hate, bro. Do you, do you feel like um a lot of the home, the home base uh, labels are looking out for New Orleans artists? No. Or you think New Orleans artists got to go outside of New Orleans to get signed? Yeah, you know, Jim signed me. Mm -hmm. Jim Jones mm -hmm. signed me, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, the, the home base uh, record label is not, not looking out for down here. So how did that Jim Jones uh, link up happen? He came out here to do a show with Sess 45 and uh, my manager at the time was like, man, get a feature from Jim, man, you know, put him on this record. So I just followed my manager, paid him. He came to the studio, vibed out. He liked the vibe. He heard a few songs. He went to giving me some partners and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I shot New York to shoot a video with him, okay. for real, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, called the Yellow Cab to the house. You know what I'm saying? Me and him sitting in the kitchen talk for like about four or five hours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we was just uh, 
You know, just running, you start reminding my camera on a little bit, like how, how I uh, had my own. You know, most artists don't be having their own, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we talked we had a good conversation. Man, I took a bath at the house and everything, slept at the house mm -hmm. and everything. Shout out Jim Jones, man. You know, I appreciate y'all. So how long how long did that run go for? And I seen is that how you got um the the the, the feature with Dave East too? Yeah, that's how I got the feature with Dave East too. Okay. Uh, so how long did that Jim Jones run go for? And did y'all have like official paperwork? Yeah, well I was under uh Vamp Life Empire distribution. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They distributed me. And um it started out probably like the beginning of the 19, in the 18, beginning of the 19. And uh, after that, you know, it was just running. I was going out of town with him, everywhere, moving with him. Yeah, we, we had we had gained a nice relationship, man. We, you know what I'm saying? Just moving around with him. Right. And they liked me, we wanted me to move with him, you know what I'm saying? Because I got along with everybody, you know, I was real cool with everybody. Oh, that's what I mean, you know, that's one of the highs of the of the rap game right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you link up, you get signed to a you know, a well known artist, you on the road with them, you doing you doing shows, you got features and all that. Yeah, I opened up for them a few shows. You know what I'm saying? So what was some of your uh, most memorable moments with like that whole when you was with the with them? Mm-hmm. But being my first rodeo, I ain't gonna lie, but being my first ride, I enjoyed it all. Mm -hmm. City to city, just catching the plane, getting that feeling as an artist moving, you know what I'm saying? So we just moving around, the 6 a.m. red eyes, just I, just, I just was enjoying every moment of it, you know what I'm saying? Well, I met some hell of a people with him, though, like, you know, Alex Todd, Jay-Z, Jula. And I'm talking about not just meet them, like, shook their hand, and he called me Mimosa T, you know, like, we have a, a relationship, you see what I'm saying? So it just, it just mean a lot of people, you know, that was the good thing about it, you know. Right, for sure. Um, so Ben, so what happened as far as that relationship? With Jim. Yeah. Well, before we even get to that, the kind of like, without, you don't gotta, you know. Do too much about, about it. The, about the money and everything. I'm gonna yeah. talk about the contract because Jim got a little history of, you know, he signed these new, he signed new artists. To some vicious deals, there's right. 10, 10 album deals, and like, you know, well, he didn't hit me like that. He ain't, he ain't give me like that. He was, uh, I guess, probably him, by him probably going through that in his earlier days, he probably more a little more subtle now, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it was just a situation to help me, you okay. know what I'm saying, to try to put me out there. But it was just only distribution, I was putting my own money behind me, you know what I'm saying? Because you look at it, Jim still doing him, you know what I'm saying? He moving so fast. He ain't really got time to really, like, do the CEO thing. You know, now he's trying to, shout out to Jim, uh, Bird Gang, 2 or whatever. But back then he was just like, uh, just gave me a platform to, to put my music. You know, uh, I know looking back, she just streamed like 200 and some thousand copies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't make that much money off it, but, you know, it did good being under the Empire. Right. So, is that the reason... Did you kind of realize that he wasn't ready to be a CEO yet? Well, yeah, well, yeah, if I'm, if I gotta do all the work, you know, myself, not saying, you know, not, not saying nothing bad about him or nothing, just right. if, uh, it was still like me doing everything, you know what I'm saying? It was just when the, when the, um, the, the, um, the project get put out, they'll just distribute it. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't no big budget behind it. Mm -hmm. I had eight board, billboards in the city. I paid, you know, I was doing everything out of my pocket. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like... Yeah. It was just like a, probably like a what? Like a cosign deal type of situation? Just like a distribution, like putting putting it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Where it could sell everywhere. But if I had a $500,000 budget, I could have capitalized off the more better, you know what I'm saying? Because right. I put more money behind me. And now they could, it's everywhere already. I just gotta let the people know that it's everywhere. That's what I'm saying. So was what, was it was it not was like not necessarily Jim, just you know, just in general, were they not doing a good job putting your voice in these different regions that are in the country? Yeah, so it was just. I didn't cut y'all. No, you good. You good. You good. Yeah, I was just still doing the, the marketing stuff myself. All it was was just. Putting it on the digital platform, 
everything else, marketing and doing all the stuff, I was still doing it myself. You know what I'm saying? So what about um, outside of New Orleans, though, the places that you couldn't reach? Were they helping, trying to get your voice out into these? No, uh -huh. no, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. Like I said, it was just strictly a distribution. Right. No. Okay. Like, gotcha. like you just put <laughs> my album on all the media platform, like 150 sites, but people could go get it. Right. But to draw the people to it, I had to do the work. Okay. So then it then it it eventually came to an end. The uh, relationship with you and Jim. Not the relationship, but. Uh, Maybe the business side. The business, the feds picked me up. Well, the album was doing good, man. I ain't gonna lie, the album was doing good. Mm -hmm. I had the balling with uh, Davies. It was spinning on Q93, uh, 5 o'clock radio. Uh, the feds come again in 19. Oh, yeah, 2019? 2019, they arrested me in, at Customs in Miami for like 400 grams of heroin and 300 some grams of crack. So when I'm bringing my girl back from Jamaica for her birthday, I was arrested. They got you right in, uh, in Miami. Um, yeah, they got me in Miami. You know how when you uh, mm -hmm. come right from Jamaica, you got to come to Customs. So when I'm coming through Customs, I st scan my passport. They told me to go to the counter. And my girl scanned her passport and told her to go straight in. So I right then I just told her, I said, yeah, I might be hit. You know what I'm saying? Because I already got phone calls from home. Mm -hmm. You know, they had hit the block like 30 state trooper trucks, 500 police. Two band sprinters, a helicopter, uh, a Hummer, Ram Hummer. Yeah, it was it was like a, a movie, like you know what I'm saying. I was I was trying to get the footage from the store. The store called the footage. I was gonna use for my documentary too. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was just unreal, man. Seven block radius from uh, LaSalle to Drys, Drys, Saratoga, Saratoga, back up to LaSalle. Four police on each corner with shotguns. It was like some movie type shit. And I was in Jamaica at the time. So they thought they was coming for they, they thought they was yeah, coming for me, yeah. So did that come as a surprise or did you have any signs before before the phone calls that you was getting? Like did you did you have any type of feeling like that? Well, you know, the magnitude of what we was doing, I always knew it could be in a day. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the spots I think we were doing like twenty G's a day at that spot. So, you know, it was just I knew it was gonna come. I didn't know when. You know what I'm saying? But I was prepared to, like, just moving a certain kind of way. It took my hair and everything for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Took my hair cut the seats up in it, made the people tour it. Yeah, they, they, got, they got busy with me. So when you get locked up, you said uh, 400 bags of... No, 400 grams of 400 heroin, grams. 300 grams of crack. So did you, uh, what, what type of time was you facing off that? Uh, well, when I got arrested at Customs, they brought me to jail in Miami. So then, uh, they drove me from Miami to New Orleans in a dog truck, 72 hours, feeding us through the the hatch, you know, the little hatch. So imagine you tied up like El Chapo, like this with other prisoners, eating the hamburgers through the hatch. We did that 72 hours. And they making stops, pickups and, and drop offs in other parishes as they go. When I get to Orleans, um, I had a bond. When I try to go bond out, they, they act like they called me for release. And you still young, you going home. When I go down to the feds or down there. So then when I come from Miami, charged in Orleans, I go to court first. So I got a lawyer, everything now. So the judge, the, the prosecutor tell the judge, we didn't know he was gonna be back that fast. The federal government is gonna pick up this charge. Mm -hmm. I tell my lawyer, I said, man, push the issue because if they, they're not ready, that's on them. He said, I won't wait and see what they got. You know what I'm saying? The next day I'm supposed to go to court. I did. Somebody got killed in the jail. Dude got stabbed up. They blocked everything. Nobody didn't go. When the, the cap checked the computer, I had to buy it. I bought it out. I bought it out. Go downstairs. The fears were down there. Now I'm charged with conspiracy. I'm on a criminal contempt. I'm not indicted. I'm charged with a uh, conspiracy. Five or more kilos of heroin. Nine firearms. Leadership role. Yeah, I'm charged with a few things. Right? So they bring me to... Uh, St. Tammany Parish, the federal judge of St. Tammany Parish. So I didn't know what I was facing. Well, when I went to the feds, I know I'm, I'm like, man, I'm gonna probably lay down. So I'm just making preparations to lay down. You know, cause most people don't come home from the feds. You know, I'm gonna fuck with you, they don't come home. So when I got there, you know, I was just making preparations to lay down. I, I hired two lawyers, I paid for it. 
I had a state lawyer and a federal lawyer. And you know, it was just, a lot of shit was blessed with too, man, because I had a guy on the till that I fell on the till with. He was, uh, he had just wrote Obama for clemency to come home. And he was giving me a lot of perms on how to handle my lawyers and different shit. Because I had to talk to my lawyers like, you know, y'all stay clean. Y'all will properly represent me. Because, you know, the feds will have so much shit on lawyers, too. They'll make them sell you out. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So once I found out this slave was clean and he was schooling me. Because, you know, I had, as a matter of fact, I didn't have no gun charges at first. But in order to lock me in and get no bond, that's how the feds do. No bond, they're going to put a gun on you. So when I got the when I went back to uh, get my paperwork after they brought me the first day, not then I was charged with nine guns, all the guns they found. And he was telling me, I ain't gonna lie, shout out to Ray. He was telling me every time I went, he said, "Why'd you have a gun tomorrow? They gotta lock you in." And I didn't understand, but he was he was he was giving me good partners throughout the whole thing. He even gave me some questions to ask my lawyers, and I asked him. So yeah, the two lawyers. Um so you get all these charges. Like you said, you was, you was kind of preparing yourself to like lay down for a little bit. But the feds, you know, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm kind of I'm getting my stuff situated, closing houses down, Damn. taking furniture out of other houses, you know, and then just. But as I'm doing that, he also telling me, like, man, they came weak if this all they got. Cause they didn't have me on the wire You see what I'm saying? So it was just like. So was it like a whole, like a, like a Rico type situation? Like you and like a whole... Well, it was an adopted case, like just say, uh, the feds and NOPD come on the joint task force. Mm -hmm. But once the feds see the magnitude of it, mm -hmm. they took it. So they adopted the case. So instead of me just going straight up as being indicted, I'm on the criminal complaint. And they got to bring me to the grand jury to get indicted. And the people had that paper, I was moving like 300 something grounds a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, what is that equivalent to the streets as far as like 300 grams? That's, uh, that's like 200 grams from a half a brick. Like that's like, oh, okay. man, that's like 14 ounces a day, uh, 10 ounces a day, somewhere around there. So do you end up taking that to trial? Well, uh, I'm going through the motions. The, uh, the police want me so bad they come in the court and they don't even have to come in the court. Right? So when I go to buy a hammer, um, I had the same prosecutor as the Telly Hector case, the federal prosecutor, right? So she started off her defense with a video. They played Return of the Real International TV video in federal court to the judge, like just describing me or whatever. So, uh, so that, that, you, that YouTube stuff and all them videos and Instagram, social media, that stuff is real when they be putting that in the, yeah, in the courtroom. They bring in the court, they took pictures of me on my page with Mike Tyson, they took pictures of my jewelry, mm -hmm. they took pictures off my page, they took a few things off my page and tried to use it. Mm -hmm. But I think when uh, the judge, when she started her defense with a video instead of evidence, that's why I kind of think with a judge allow my my lawyer to question the police who was trying to get me indicted. Mine they didn't even have to be them. But they were just so anxious on getting me caught up they wanted to come. So then my lawyer was like, well since uh, we deny Mr. Young Bond because he's a threat to society, let's let the police come up here and tell us why he's a threat to society. And the judge granted it. You know what I'm saying? Police come on there. He asked the police like six questions, like, yo, saw Mr. Young with drugs? He said, no. He said, you got pictures of Mr. Young with drugs? He said, no. He said, you said Mr. Young with guns? He said, no. He said, you got pictures of Mr. Young with guns? He said, no. He said, you got eight spots. They hit eight spots this time. The studio and everything. So they like, you got pictures of Mr. Young coming out of any of these places? And they're like, no. So how did he the, the lead of a DTO? And that's what, that's what punished their case, because now I'm in the menace. You got the arresting officer who's trying to get me indicted saying he never saw me. You know what I'm saying? So when the lawyers did that, that forced their hand to drop my charge without prejudice. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think it was a rule. Uh, it was in my phone. It was some type of rule they did. They couldn't get me indicted by the grand jury. So instead of letting me go scot-free, they told me, uh, without prejudice, if you start selling drugs again, we're going to pick this charge up and add it to the new charge. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's how they had to do it. And I, I, I sit 31 days. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But hey, that's a, you know, I take that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I love it. You know, but I'm, I, shout out to God, man, because I'm very spiritual, man. You mm-hmm. know, it was just the grace of God, bro. You know what I'm saying? The walk, cause it, it, wasn't no, it wasn't nothing no human could do for me. Right. Behind them doors, even I paid lawyers, but it wasn't so much they could do. I mean, when I went to preliminary hearing, if you check federal cases, they never make it to preliminary hearing. You see what I'm saying? They always get done before then. And when I'm on the elevator to go to preliminary hearing, one of the aides turned around. He like, man, you heard what happened, huh? Because I was half asleep on the tip. I was like, nah, I ain't hear what happened. He said, man, the federal government dropped all the charges. Mm-hmm. You free to go. I dropped on my knees right there and started praying, like, you know, thank God, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I know it's just the grace of God got me out of there. So you think that that arrest is what kind of uh, messed up your momentum but as far as the rap yeah, go? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did, because when I come home, I had a charger sitting in front of my house. Mm. Like, I couldn't even, like, you know, if I leave my house, they follow me, like, so, and it's around pandemic time. Mm. You know, the end of 19, I come home December 5th, 2019. Pandemic, pandemic like March 2020. It started right in the next mm-hmm. one. Yeah, it, re- it really slowed down my motion. Even though the pandemic was coming, but it killed money. I lost like 250 in 31 days. Moving bad again. And yeah, it, it, it kind of stopped my momentum. So, coming, so you had that issue in 2012 with the feds. You know, you beat the, you beat the feds in 2012. Mm-hmm. And in 2019, kind of like beat them again. Beat them again. Does that did people like in the streets kind of raise the eye like how do how you get them how you get them twice? Yeah, they, you know people raise their eye because some people don't get them once. Mm, right, you know right. But you know the people really know you. Mm-hmm. They come to me like that. What you did to, to beat them because I want to know. And other people just want to draw a perception to you. You know they thought whatever they want. You know they want that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I told you before, people rather go see you later on and do twenty years for to be real. But if you're smart enough to save your money and pay good lawyers and beat them, you're right. And you had a um, <clears throat> you had a, a pretty much like a back and forth with OG Booby Black about like this kind of situation. Yeah, he spoke on my name. Did y'all have a relationship before that though? Yeah, my manager asked me to, at the time. My manager asked me to fuck with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't too fond of fucking with niggas anyway, just in general. My manager like, man, we doing music, you know, you got to mingle a little. So I fooled with him, you know, we ain't doing no music together. But I fucked it with him before, you know what I'm saying? On the strength of my manager. So you say he spoke on your name, he spoke on your situation? Yeah, he just called me a rat, like, you know, old rat ass niggas and all that shit like that. So it's just like, hold on, man, you, you know, we two different speeds, man, like. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't even be speaking on my name for one like that. Then you tell it to a bitch like, you know, like, oh yeah, man, y'all getting me from more ratting ass niggas. And I just took it personal because, you know, they got niggas in jail saying he put them in there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a, a snitch calling me a rat. Like, you know, I, should took, I took that kind of personal. You know what I'm saying? But if, if, if he was like, like somebody with his name, if he was the rat, don't you think that would probably be out there already? Like paperwork would have been, would have been. Well, yeah, I, I was offering two thousand dollars for it. It's out there. Oh, it's out there. I was trying to pay for it, but I couldn't get it. Right now, you taking care of a nigga in jail. You too long. And you know, like I say, uh, it's hearsay too, cause I never saw the paperwork myself, but I heard it from reliable source. You know what I'm saying? But I'm only was interested in it because he told me something. I mean, then I don't give a fuck, cause you know, I don't fuck with him anyway. I feel that. Like I said, that ain't that whole. You know, nah, I said you spoke really... on. Nah, that's that's good. That's good shit. You know, that ain't your thing, and I respect that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But you know, you speaking on it, allowing me to speak on. That's cool too, cause you know, at the end of the day, they don't get no, they don't get no response from me. You know about this shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. I mean, that, that whole yeah, situation part of your story too. Yeah, though, part of my mind. story too. So I don't mind tapping into. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. For sure. Um. And then. Speaking of part of your story and you know the back and forth, you had a back and forth with uh, with, was it Stunner or Birdman? Well, I I spoke on something Birdman posted, and he must have told Hot to say something about it or whatever, and oh, okay. you know me and Hot passed words on Instagram about it. You know what I'm saying? So just I'm gonna say what I want. You know what I'm saying? 
That's Instagram is a picture. I say what I want, like, you know what I'm saying? But we say what we say, you know what I'm saying? I saw him in person. I say what I say, he say what he said, and that was it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So, uh, moving on past that, um, so you mentioned Ski Boo inspiring you. Mm -hmm. And Dooney inspired you to like get money because you seen the money they was getting. Mm -hmm. Would you say those are ones who brought you into the game, or was it did you had to go out? Did you go elsewhere to get brought into the game? Well, well, they was you know they had so much shit going on, man. I ain't, I they inspired me, but I didn't want to go over there. You know what I'm saying? But I knew this what I wanted to do, so uh, I had hooked up with uh, Joe. Uh, L. Javine and was out downtown from our Palmyra. And they had motion already uh, on the second floor by Didi. So I just had one high little joke, you know what I'm saying? And me and him just clicked, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to become his little protege, not his son. Cause you know, most of the niggas get under niggas with more than them and be, that be their dad and they be, nah. I was more like his protege, like, you know what I'm saying? Getting everything he could teach me, you know what I'm saying? And he brought me in the game, shout out Joe, you know what I'm saying? He brought me in the game. So when he brought you in the game, um, or you said, you know, skit, skit and all of them, they had a lot going on. Yeah. Well, like, what would you consider like a lot going on? Was it like all the- all Beef, the, yeah, yeah. You know, beefing with people in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a wall inside the project. And it was just like, uh, shootings. They had a clicker, like I think they had probably about nine, 10 killers in their clique. So just imagine all of them on bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That kind of shooting niggas, they doing all kind of shit, man. Shooting niggas on police calls, everything. They was wild, you know what I'm saying? So, I want the money. I, I deal with that if it come to it, but that's not my first preference. Like, that was their first preference. You know what I'm saying? They would like to play with that gun. And, and so, that's the DBs? That's the DBs, yeah. Okay, Shout so out you, to the DBs, man. You know you, what I'm saying? You spent a lot of time with you, like, hanging out with them? Um, well, it was, it was us in the court we. Mm -hmm. Like, they on that and I'm on this end. You know what I'm saying? It was just mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? I remember a story like, uh, Kevin Franks and Timmy Carew, like, um, they come holler at me one time. Like I said, they probably got about 13, 20 buyers between them two. I ain't had nothing, you know what I'm saying? And they was just like, CT, you know, let me holler at you. So, mine, they shirts like this. You know, they had extended clips and shit like that. They shirts poking out. So my partner got straight up and went to go get the ratchet. But me, you know, fuck. I just walked over there, because you know, like, what the hell, like, you know what I'm saying? So I just walked over there. And they was just like, man, run Nick off your set. You know, he in the back trying to run sales. We gonna kill him, we don't wanna kill him on your set. I said that in one of my songs. If that ain't respect, what you call that, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, it was just love. Like, you know, like I said, just a nigga just being a man, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, they didn't have to do it. They didn't have to tell me run him. Don't kill him on your set to make it hot, but, you know, just a nigga how a nigga carry himself, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, yeah, so did you ever have, like, like you said, like he said, Nick was kind of on No, we never, we never yeah, bumped no heavy. Bump yeah, heads. we never bumped heavy because, uh, it was understood, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Y'all doing y'all, we doing, we doing us, you know what I'm saying? And the respect was there, so it was mutual too. I respected them too. It wasn't like I was disrespectful. I respected them too. So another another one that you hear about all the time is uh, Shorty Mike. Did you have a relationship with Shorty Mike? Yeah, I fucked with Shorty Mike. Mm -hmm. I fucked with Shorty Mike. Shorty Mike was cool. You know, it's so crazy. But a lot of them dudes wasn't like that at first. Like doing it turned them into monsters. You know what I'm saying? They probably had it in them and probably them did shit, but the way they turned out after Duna had them, yeah, Duna turned a lot of them into monsters. Shout out, rest in peace, shout out to Mike. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would you say Dooney, um, how can I say this, like, did he, did he, so you, you would say like he brought it out of him? Yeah. Like he influenced he, that on him? Yeah, he, he influenced that on him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, because they, 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 they became ridiculous after doing it, bro. But doing it was like that, you know what I'm saying? He was big on respect, you know what I'm saying? So, and he just, he just made, he just braided a, a, a little group of killers, man, you know what I'm saying? Did you have a uh, relationship with doing it? It was funny, it was just funny how me and him, he always used just to holler at me, and I never understood why, like one day I'm playing speeds. And I'm next to the nigga they trying to kill, Butch, right? So, they, 
I'm on this porch right here. We playing speeds. They in the cut right there. They probably gonna come out both cuts trying to kill Bush. But they asking Dooney like, man, T right there. You know? Dooney like, don't fuck with it, right? Next day he see me, he tell me like, say T, bro. I can't tell a nigga stop spinning by that spade game. You know what I'm saying? You playing spade with a nigga, you know what they into. I can't keep telling them don't go. You see what I'm saying? I took that as, you know, love. Like, like you see, I like told Black, like, you ain't got to tell me no more. I ain't gonna play space with Bush no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's it what it is. Cause you, you be, you know, if you come out your way to make me to tell me some shit like that, I gotta respect it. You know what I'm saying? And he always used to tell me little shit like, you know what I'm saying? Even when it coming through the cut, say T, tell them niggas keep it in the street. Don't play the police. You know what I'm saying? And me and him never got on no level like for him to tell me shit like that. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. My mom used to cook a lot. A lot of niggas used to fuck with my mom. I don't know what it was. But he always used to tell me some shit, you know, look out for me or whatever. You right. Know what I'm Rest in peace doing it, you know what I'm saying? And you, you just don't know where kind of like that respect kind of came from. from yeah, from I, yeah, I, can't, right, right. yeah I don't even know where, you know where it even came from, you know what I'm saying? So, but it was there. Oh, okay. Um, and any the other um, hot boys that you had, did you, did you know him personally or had any type of relationship with him? No, I watched Gangsta Reek have it. I watched Gangsta Reek have it because then I was younger. <clears throat> Dooney wasn't back there then. Okay. Uh, if he was, he wasn't doing what he was doing once I became up in age. Uh, Stone, yeah, I watched Stone. It was different, bro. Stone, Gangsta, Gangsta was just really different, bro. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? He was really a hot boy to kill. You know what I'm saying? So I was able to see him in action. And uh, Skip. What's uh relationship with Skip? Yeah, that's my dog. Yeah. Yeah, that's my dog. I'm fucking Skip. Yeah, Skip. He never tried to be. He was always him. You know what I'm saying? Always him. You know what I'm saying? And it just, it just, it just love that man. I fuck with Skip, man. Did you have a relationship with uh, Log of Black? Man, yeah, we used to rip the fuck out Log of Black. That's what I'm saying. See how my brother be mean? Like I say, uh, my brother don't smile and shit. But he was stupid with the ribbon. We used to fuck along the black and ran up. They used to have the corner pocket. They used to be doing the comedy show. But we was the niggas that used to rip the fuck out of the black now. Yeah. You tell me that. Y'all used to rip along it. Yeah, we used to rip the fuck out of them, man. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask him next time. Yeah, I'm going to ask him about what he Why would he say? Because I heard he undefeated out there. No, he ain't undefeated. He ain't undefeated. He undefeated outside the project. Yeah. Yeah, in the project, he was getting his ass scuffed up. Yeah. <laughs> He got his ass cuffed up in that project. But he was a fool too. He was a fool though. Mm -hmm. um, a fool. Him and Randy. Shout out Logger, man. Shout out Logger. Um, and then, you know, Double Crosser. Yeah, ever they say Double Crosser? Nah, not like with Logger. I ain't had no yeah. relationship with Double Crosser. I knew him. He a holler, but it wasn't no relationship like I fuck with Logger, I fuck with other people. No, I wasn't like that. But we knew each other. Yeah, every, every, you know, every, and that's the thing too about back, back, back there, everybody you have a different relationship with. You know what I'm right. saying? That was the good thing about them. But you was, you was cool to DBs. Um, you know, I, I interviewed a few of them, uh, Kenny Boo and uh, Johnny Boo. Did you have a relationship with them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, me and Johnny Boo was cool. Kenny, no, me and Kenny Boo was cool. Johnny Boo. You know, it's just crazy. Like, certain ones I was cool with. Dizzy, Be Stupid, uh, Johnny Boo. Trail, Kennedy, uh, some of them I didn't mingle with, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, all of them was cool, it wasn't nothing personal, nothing like that, just, you know, I had who I, who I fooled with. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? But all of them was cool, though. I remember one time, I'm walking from my keys in them house, and when I come through the cut, I hear pss, pss, pss. Oh, fuck the so I hear a nigga, I was a nigga come out of the hallway, four niggas with black on chopper, like, maybe you see Doon out there, raise your hand up. You know what I'm saying? I know who it is. Once they come out of the hallway, I see who they is. I'm like, man, I ain't about to get in there and shit. I'm about to raise my motherfucking hand. So just as we coming out of the dog driveway, Doon and Shorty Mike getting out the green luminum, but they parked on this side, so now they got to cross the driveway to get to, uh, the porch they going to. So just imagine, I hear the footsteps coming behind me now. Cause the guys in the hallway is pointing directly out the driveway. So as we get close to the driveway, Shorty Mike and them coming, I hear them coming now. 
Man, why four calls the police coming too? Mm. Back, back behind each other. That's the only thing they said doing this shot like that night. Four calls the police. Cause they can't, cause they had four niggas with choppers in the hallway. You know what I'm saying? Waiting on them. Waiting on them. And they didn't know. They was about to go to the moon. So when they got out the Lumina and come across the driveway, doing them coming out of the dark, it's pitch black. So you can't see in the driveway till they come to the front in the light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the four cars wouldn't have been back to back. They were gonna fuck them up that night. You know what I'm saying? And that's certain shit I just take to my grave. Like, all the niggas be knowing that type of shit is uh, the niggas who's in the hallway who told me, you know, throw my hand up. But I was just always a nigga like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't taking no sides. Doing it, even doing it with telling me that. I'm not gonna play with Butch. I'm not gonna do nothing to say. You know what I'm saying? I stay neutral in that shit. I got a relationship with you, a relationship with him. I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't fucking with that, but. So that was that like the, the internal Magnolia beef? Uh, yeah, that was internal. Had? Yeah, that was internal. Because nigga felt like he wasn't from back though. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it resulted. So you out to 17. You come back here doing all that. You know what I'm saying? Then they, then they got shot. That's another thing that triggered it all. Down there, meet a few dollars down though. And doing it like, man, if you sell everything down here, you gotta get it from me. Like, man, what? I'm from back here, that stone, bro. Like, Kim the Stone. Yeah, you know, they shot back up, man. Bird pedal, had bird pedal on his eyelids. You know, nigga stood over him. But it was a street sweeper. But he had bird pedals in the gun. If he had real slow, he would probably fuck up. But that's when the internal beef really started because they felt like Duna was doing too much to, and he ain't from back here. You know what I'm saying? And there it go. So with all that internal beef going on, did that kind of uh, bring any heat to where, what you had going on? Well, it was heat already because Safe Home was hitting, Bloodhound Swords was hitting, everybody was hitting anyway. But what made it so uh, hard, they had other projects up. So they couldn't just focus on us. They had the St. Thomas, the Calio, the Melfa, and the Magnolia. There's four projects from that. You know, so they can't just focus on us. They got all they got all this and this one and every one of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it just heat everywhere. But you know, I just stay my distance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just try to stay out the way of that. Yeah, you got to, cause you know, especially if a man respect you enough to tell you, mm -hmm. you know, stay out the way. Don't be, don't be right there. So after doing he died though, how, how how did it? How did things like fall apart for, as far as like the Dooney boys from well, your from your perspective? Well, yeah, well. After doing it, that it wasn't no, you know, the doing the boys. They were doing it, yeah. So after doing it, that uh, uh, fat started coming back to ten more fat out of Saint Tony. So he was fucking with Wop and uh, dealing with him. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, it was just always, it was just the same thing, mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? So when ten more fat started coming back, there, did he, did he face any problems from not being yeah, back? Yeah, he then? did. He did. He faced the problem, man. He he almost got he, he he got killed he almost got killed he, he uh they had a problem with this guy called Leonard Morgan. Leonard was just fast as a motherfucker like running and he played with the gun so he was just a problem like he he moved a lot so even though the DBs had a few killers in their clique Leonard was giving them a problem you see what I'm saying and uh Fat took it up on himself like oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show y'all how to handle the problem or whatever so uh, one day Fat woke up on Leonard. And then up that bitch quick, but it's like 90 degrees. Fat got a hood on, you know what I'm saying? If, if anybody in the right mind know, man, Tim Fat got a hood on 90 degrees. You know what he trying to do? You know what I'm saying? So I need to talk that bitch down out there. Oh man, who do it ain't about that? Who do? And then I put that bitch down. That nigga punish them. Mm -hmm. And I ain't telling you nothing like like I'm snitching on him. He already arrested for it. Got life sentence for it, whatever. So, but. Being out there, that nigga punished me. I ain't never seen a nigga like get down on a nigga like that. Like that nigga pull his pants up. Get close to a nigga like put that bitch to the feet. Fat was fucked up. Yeah. yeah. So it was like broad daylight? Broad daylight. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. So you said he already arrested, arrested for that? Yeah, he got four life sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got four life sentences. I don't know if it's that, but he kept the same gun he was doing all the murders with. Yeah. He got caught with the same gun he was doing all the murders with. Damn, yeah, I heard, I heard he was like, uh, he was vicious. Like. Yeah, he was, bro. He was. He was, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You see, he was a little bit before my era, though. Mm -hmm. Like, but he was in the Thomas. He wasn't from the Magnolia. 
But you know, yeah, he was. He was a problem. But he, it wasn't like to where a nigga wouldn't fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? He just knew how to move. Leonard had it. Leonard just ain't know who he had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If Leonard had any idea who he had to up on, he put to kill him anyway. Just for opening the gun on him, because Fat probably gonna kill him anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was just a, it was just a lot of it was just a lot of shit. So I made them, man. So he did that to show the uh, the DBs. Yeah. Yeah, how to flex. Mm. You know so uh, besides that though, because you know, he, like you said, Dooney had his internal beef with people that. Mm -hmm. So like, Fat didn't come. Then get the same pushback from in front of people. Would you say? Nah, cause nah, he wasn't as flamboyant as doing. Mm -hmm. Doing was like pushing in your face, bitch. I don't, like it was different. You know what I'm saying? And then doing it just was doing it was just different. You know what I'm saying? But Fat ain't had that problem like do like like doing it. I don't know why doing it had it like that, but but like I told you, I just. You know what I'm saying? They felt doing it all of that to get done. So, you know what I'm saying? You shot a nigga who from back here. A, a, you know, a stand-up nigga from back here. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's where the problem came in. And Fed did that. He, I don't think he was back there after that no more. Because uh, Leonard brother pull up and shot it out with Fed, right? When, you see, after Fed killed his brother or whatever, Leonard brother was pulling up. At the same time? Same time. And why would shoot it out with Fed? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, man, you pick my mind, man, so many stories about that, man, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know? Dang. At the same time, so you said Fat stood over him, like... Yeah, kneel down on him, yeah. Damn. Kneel down on him. Yeah, that's what, that's what they call, what, like a statement body, they say? Yeah, you know, dog. Mm -hmm. You know, dog. dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nigga, dog. You know what I'm saying? When you, they scooping your head up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogs, you know what I'm saying? And that was that was they was big on that was a trophy back then, like you know what I'm saying? Watching niggas get dogs. That's the crazy part too, bro. Cause I don't, man, that's when sound saw so much shit, bro. Just being out there, motherfucker, say, man, look, wrap it up, we about to smash him. Yeah. And you know, you just be looking at a nigga, don't even know you about to get smashed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And nigga flex on him, nigga, just looking at him, nigga hitting him on his head with that bitch, like damn. That's why I learned like watching the nigga get dog and dogging the nigga is two different things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it just it just stuck up here. Like just be prepared, it could happen. So you so you say dogging somebody, like what what do you have to do for somebody to be considered dog, like be dogging? Uh, like about five or six to the face. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When they fall, just stand over. Some niggas empty clips in their face. You know what I'm saying? Berg, I mean Berg, all this. I think that was my first one back there, Berg out the mouth. And they hit him in the field with a shotgun, boom. All this was all. Like when we went and saw Berg, this part of his face was over there. Like his face was split up like off his body, like, you know what I'm saying? That was the one of the most gruesome murders I ever saw. You know, I think that was my first one at the time back there. Nigga fucked Berg up, boy. How that, how that, how that? He was out of bounds. Oh, oh, oh just oh, it always came in my mind like, and you, and you and you see it from start to end. Like nigga get dog, you see the body out there, and you see the family reaction mm -hmm. come to the scene, right? And I just always told myself, I said, man, I ain't let my mama come out here and see me like that. You know, whatever it takes to not let my mama come out here and see me like that. That's where it fucked me up mentally, like, cause I seen the after effect of it, the people be fucked up. Heartbroken, you on the ground, twisted like this. The time they wasn't covering your body up. You know they got the thing that they put around your body. Not then they wasn't doing that. He was just out there, stretched out. You know what I'm saying? So you just see how mom used to cry on the ground. You just see it. You know, I was like, damn, why? I ain't never let my mom come out there and see me like that. I call my daughter like, oh, your daddy stretched out like that. Nah, fuck that. They leave you back there for probably a little minute for somebody to come. Yeah, they gonna they, for somebody to come pick you up, they're gonna investigate and all that. They might throw a sheet over me or whatever, I think with sheets back then. But, uh, so you saying people would like would get dogs so bad that they would have to scoop like pick Yeah, they had to scoop their you know what I'm saying? Piece of their face up or their body up or, or whatever, yeah. Cause you know, that was the thing, like niggas catch you, they won't make a statement. I fucked him up. Yeah, don't play with me, you know what I'm saying? So, Headshots was the thing. 
She like this arrow here do a lot of shooting out cars and all that shit. Back then they were walking up on you like flushing you. Like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? And I think seeing it from that aspect of it, like if I think about the saw from this, I wouldn't be as serious as I am about it. You know, when I step out the door, I'm militant, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm on my shit. But seeing how dangerous and vicious it was, and how a nigga do you when you're on the ground, you just be like, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't trying to get done like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Reconstructed face. Niggas had to get their face reconstructed, family had to pay an extra two thousand dollars, all kind of shit, man. You know what I'm saying? They just be like, man, shit stuck in your head, like, man, don't let them, don't let them do you that. Don't let them get you like that. So, um, well, the burger situation, you said he was out of bounds? Yeah, he was out of bounds. Mm -hmm. He came back, he was out of the mouth, I think. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's another thing, too, a lot of niggas, the out of bounds shit was serious, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't pay me to go in the cattle, you. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm running the only time when the carry was out of Danny, I had to be gone by a nigga who was vicious. You know what I'm saying? Like mussy, big dogs, you know what I'm saying? I used to go by Danny, if I used to go on Marvel the King, I ain't like to go on the driveway. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you gonna get your issue. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? So you been like out there when somebody would say like, yeah, we about to we about to punish somebody. Yeah. And then I they, watch him punish you him. You just watch him punish him. Yeah, watch him punish him. But like you look like damn, you don't even know you about to get punished. You don't know you about to get punished, nah. Nigga, nigga, I respect nigga. Tell me, man, you know, start closing your shop up or, or start getting your people together. Nigga, about to fuck him up. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, fuck him up. Mm. I just be looking like, damn. And the mental effect on me, it always had on me. I can't speak for nobody else. Hey, yeah, I'm not like that. Mm. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't trying to get caught like that. So any problem I have, I'm trying to move first. I ain't trying to play with you, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to play with it because growing up back then, bro, it was, it was serious. It was serious. So what was like the, the pettiest reason you ever heard somebody getting dogged? You like, damn, you just dogging for... A bike. A bike. Mm. Nigga take a bike, go take a ride. Nigga come back, nigga fuck him up. You know what I'm saying? Nigga fuck him up and run past his brother. The type of story, nigga, nigga run past, nigga fuck him up, then run past his brother, and the brother be like, who that is? And the nigga who killed his brother be like, well, I don't know who that is, and just run past him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nigga, you know, nigga telling me the story, nigga like, man, I should've killed his brother right there too, knowing what I was up against, you know what I'm saying? But it was over a bike. Over a nigga taking a ride on the bike, you know what I'm saying? A lot of shit, that shit that happened right there wasn't worth no nigga life, man. That's why I'm saying you grew up thinking that shit normal, like, you know what I'm saying? But it really not, because half of this shit don't be worth no nigga life. Man. But that was the lowest thing. The bike probably, a few dollars, 10, 20 dollars. But the bike was probably the lowest thing. You just hear that news and just shake your head probably like. Yeah, I was young, I was young then. But the, you know, coming from back there, just be like, you don't understand it, but it just be like, he had his reasons, you know? He killed a good nigga. You know, nigga be done killed a good nigga too, that's what I'm saying. This shit is crazy, but a nigga go haywire in a minute, so. Mm. So when you was uh, when you was running out there, though, did you, because you hear a lot of these stories that's coming out now about different crews having different beats with like different projects. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other like, oh, beats? Yeah, beats. See, and that's the thing about me, like I just was like, I don't know, you had to fuck with me. I never left no open, I never pillow talked to no bitches, I never spoke on a nigga business. You know what I'm saying? You always had to just come directly at me if you didn't like me. That's what I like about it. So, you know, fuck. You had a lot of niggas that probably didn't like me, which is how I carry myself, you know what I'm saying? I had incidents before, I had to take care of shit like internal, you know what I'm saying, in a project by outsiders. You know, we don't apply for one year, ain't coming in the project. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you never was like, caught out of bounds, like you yeah. said. Nah, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna be too, you know what I'm saying? Well, we went at, well, I used to hang in 7th Street. That was where I came, that was where I was at before I went in the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was always big on that. Because at the time, you got think niggas getting killed doing that. Nigga going to project, oh, he just got killed. One of uh, Sterling got killed. One of Hot Boy got killed in Out of Bounds, you know what I'm saying? The mosquito got killed in the county. See what I'm saying? Was, Cali was some of the worst niggas, though. That was against to get the props he was getting at the time. He was beefing with all them niggas. They were like 10, 10, 15 killers. Like, them niggas were real killers. 
Not saying nobody else wouldn't kill him, but I be looking at nigga want money, a nigga want murder. Some niggas will just want murder, no money. Some niggas want money and they'll take murder if it come with it, you know what I'm saying? The they just want it. Yeah, they just want to kill. They like, they like to kill. Nigga done got killed going to school. Like, I tell you, don't, you know, go don't school, uh, go get something and you go get it, but I go to school from over here. They didn't kill a nigga for that. You go spend your ten dollars over there. You done made this man go get it. He mad now. He done killed you. You know what I'm saying? Killed two niggas in the car behind that. I'm telling you to just be the wildest shit. Just be the wildest shit. I was out there when we were on so came back down. You, you, you was you was there from from the beginning. Um, yeah, I was there. I was I was little. I was in the industry then. Mm -hmm. I was in Belmont then. And uh, well, what, what happened that day? Like from your perspective? Um, well, we, we was in the um. Cool, well, I knew we were playing on a crater of basketball goal. And uh, he came back that he had chose sides. Uh, the guy I was telling you about who killed the dude over the bike, Booby chose the, the, the guy who did the killing. So now the dude brother knew was fucking up everything that, that was on that side. So they called Booby, you know what I'm saying? Shot his arm off. So when we all went around there to see his arm shot up, he had an up the gun to keep a nigga off him, so everybody broke back out running. But his arm was hanging off, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if nigga hit him with a, a gauge, close range or something, a street sweep or something. But it knocked his arm off, you know what I'm saying? But, so when y'all were like, hear the shots or, you know, see a body, y'all, that first instance was like to run towards it, see like, to see how, you know. Well, if you hear the shots, you're going to hear the shots and then everybody going to be in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you just going to go see, you know, you just don't want to go see a dead body for, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, boy, Troy, I remember Troy, I said, it's just crazy, bro, it's so many, I was on the post when nigga punched Troy for Halloween, it was just, it was that way, Troy was an old good dice shooting nigga, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and these, these are the ones that was, I was on the post scene, coming up, I, you know what I'm saying, so, nigga called Troy, I don't know if he hit a big dice game or what, man, nigga called Troy right there by that fire hydrant. You know, a blue suede, suede top, suede bottom, nice little car. He hit Troy in the face with that bitch. Boom, two revolvers. I remember the nigga had two revolvers. Mass bandana around here, bandana at the top. Nigga put both of them bitches. Like, nigga was big on making sure you was dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shooting from a distance shit, that shit wasn't working there. I don't know if there was pay hits or whatever, but nigga was making sure you, nigga was putting them bitches to your feet, making sure you out of it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, 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 that'll affect you, man, because you see enough of them bitches bust over, you just be like, damn, like, nah. So, so do you remember the day that you got the news that um, Soldier Slim got killed? Yeah, we was in my Nord house. And, uh, that shit was spreading through the project, man. Slim just got killed, Slim just got killed, Slim just got killed. So we went, we went run out there and see how oh, whatever. that was. Slim was executed, man. Like execution style. Mm -hmm. One in the chest, three in the feet. You know what I'm saying? Business, like, you know what I'm saying? You could tell it was just business. Somebody just making sure, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they fucked the project up with that with Slim. Yeah, it was like the, uh, what was like the mood in the project after yeah, that? Yeah, it was fucked up. Yeah. It was fucked up. Cause you know, he was on his way. He was, he was there like he was on the yeah, table. Right. Yeah, eight million dollars on the table. Mm -hmm. What caution or uh, universal? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how he did the uh, the slow motion with Juve. Juve gave him a seven forty five and made it the first thing off his album. You know, for Slim. You know what I'm saying? But Slim was a real nigga, boy. If he the guy to get in the game, he'd have fucked it up. Mm -hmm. Not for sure. Um, so that piece was just something. Like that. Nah, for sure. So you know the choice of drug in New Orleans um, is heroin. Right. And uh, you hear a lot of artists rap about it uh, back in the nineties. Um, you see a lot of people who are addicted to it, right. even young, like young people. Right. Um, even stars like you know B G. B G. Turk. Yeah. Soldier Slim. Soldier Slim. Yeah. Why? Like why? What? what you know. You know how drug hitting you don't know the full instead of using it? Mm -hmm. I think it's just like try something, because everybody try powder. Some people try dope and they like it, but they didn't know the hook they put in you. 
You know what I'm saying? Like the dependency it put on your body, like the backing of it. So it just like something that you just take it to fuck hold, cause you know, you can fuck long off it, you know what I'm saying? And it just was it just wants to sink your teeth in you. You know what I'm saying? It was over because it, it makes your body depend on it. You know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people just trying and not knowing the, the full extent of what it do you of. You know what I'm saying? Sort of like when like crack first hit. When crack first hit. Yeah, like, like, it, it, it just you might like, like it. Yeah, let me try this. I'm right. going to fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? But, but at the end of the day, like, it just it have a, learn, a long-term effect on you. You know what I'm saying? So I think they didn't know the long-term effect. They just enjoyed it. So you know somebody like around your age that you uh, that you possibly could have seen like that was that was a dick to his turf. Did you ever like see him around? Yeah, man, we didn't help him and everything. Like we, you know, we. I was big on like niggas from my project. I help because I don't want them to go back nowhere else mm -hmm. and get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And I always used to get a turk and look out for turk because you know. I ain't want you to go back there in the county and get fucked up or go somewhere else and get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't need no, no rent this car. Like, people used to use this car to give him shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't need this car. But he used to holler at a nigga and show him some love. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't like to see him like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd rather him come to me than go somewhere else and get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So that was, that, that was uh, your way of showing him love, just getting. Yeah, I might. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if he comes spin, just draw some extra, but I ain't gonna allow him to hurt. You know, the nigga be sick, huh, man? You know what I'm saying? And it's cool. So how did that um, make you, like, because, you know, he was big. I mean, he's doing good now. Shout out to Turk. Let mm -hmm. me just say that. Because we, you know, we just talking about that drug and, you know, yeah. how it could have an effect on you. So, you yeah. know, shout out to Turk. This ain't nothing about, you know, trying to bash him about being, he, nah, he, you know, he nah, open he about knows, his dick. Yeah, he know what it is. Um, yeah, how, how did that make you feel like, when you would see him young? Uh, you know, he was with Cash Money, you know. Shining, balling on on BT and top Billboard charts, and then you see him like you know in the project, and he, you know, kind of like down bad. Like did you be like damn? I just hurt. be like damn. It's like how could you have this much on one end and throw it all away for this? And that's what kind of let me know like it was out of his control. Like the drug will put a hole on you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it just was crazy seeing that shit. Like a nigga as big as he was, and then. He come down and be fucked up, you know what I'm saying? But I, just me personally, I just never had no joy in looking down on a nigga. You know what I'm saying? If I could help you, I'm gonna help you, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it was with me and him, but. Did you ever find yourself um, like dabbling with them, them hard type of drugs? Nah, uh, I never, nah. I seen, the, I seen what it did. And plus, that was my drug my whole career, heroin. So I had a constant view of what it did people. It had people get clean for seven years and relapse. You know what I'm saying? It just was a hard drug to get off of. So by me seeing the effects of it firsthand, like, bitches, they kid, like, it just was the worst firsthand. It just never, not nah, stuck with weed. I never fuck with uh, powder, uh, dope, and uh, most I do is Adderall's, ecstasy, and shit like that. I ain't fuck with other shit. So when you were serving, like, was there ever a time where you found yourself serving somebody that you never would have thought you'd be serving? Yeah, but I always gave them encouraging words, right? You know what I'm saying? And that's what niggas even say to this day, like, even though I made money off you, if I saw more in you, I'm going to let you know. Like, man, that ain't true, you know what I'm saying? I ain't judging you or nothing, but you bigger than that, you know what I'm saying? I always used to hit niggas with that because, you know, it, it don't matter how big of a giant, I saw that shit take down some giants. Like, it made niggas who was real men. It took they, you know what I'm saying? Shit they, they did, they would have never did or stood for, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, I done saw it fuck some real niggas up. And, you know what I'm saying? Made them weak, a weaker, you know what I'm saying? Than what they were. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I done saw it fuck some, some giant niggas up. So uh, what was like the effect that you seen like on a, uh in the community though, like, what, what, what does it look like? A, what does, the difference between like a crack addict and a heroin addict? See, back in the days, most heroin addicts was uh, people who worked in regular lives, like, you know what I'm saying? They just used to be on heroin. 
It wasn't like it was now how you see them running around fucked up and dirty and all that. Heroin used, used to be some of the cleanest niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say it just was a drug they was using like weed. You see what I'm saying? But you know, weed ain't gonna turn you. You know what I'm saying? You use heroin for so long, it's gonna flip you out. So it's just like back then, I mean, it was more clean up, you know, they, they, they care more about themselves. Now it's just, it's just the worst they let themselves go, you know what I'm saying? So back then it just, niggas was just fresher with the shit, ducking, but they fresh with gators on and, you know what I'm saying? And so many people was on it, like, did, did you used to get judged for, like, being, being like, they'd be like, ah, oh, you. Nah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because there's so many people that was on it, especially at a young age, like, the job, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? And they don't get it from somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, crack was different, like, crack just broke it down. Like, it wasn't no working, functioning crack mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was a functioning heroin addict, a job, a family, just do heroin on the side. Crack wasn't like that. Crack ripped you apart. You know what I'm saying? To answer your question, that was the difference between uh, a cocaine users and, and heroin users back then. Uh, you, I don't think junkies was that. They had some junkies that smoked crack that was clean, but the percentage of them was, was higher. That they was just let everything go, sucking. You know, they doing selling their body, doing more. Crack really fucked it up more than heroin. So. Bring me up to date as far as now. I mean, you know, you're still dropping music. How, how's it? How's it dropping music now in like 2023? Does it feel the same? No, nah, it don't feel the same. It don't feel the same. It don't feel the same. I, um, I'm gonna still drop it though, because you know, you know, I just feel like I'm built to beat our eyes. So it don't matter what come against me, I'm gonna still drop it. But the hate is way more thicker than there was then. Mm. You know, a lot of people that came out the closet and showed their true color. So, I love it though. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. For sure. So you got um anything coming up as yeah, far? Yeah, no, uh, uh, no, I'm gonna cut y'all. No, 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 no. three on the way. Uh, drop a single after single. I just drop Mo. I drop Skeens video. Go check that out. I drop Mo. Go check that out. I got flexing coming out in a day or two. Um, it's just working like singles. Just working my singles. Working on the project. No looking back. Three. The return of the real coming soon, you know what I'm saying? It's a pretty client to entertain. So yeah, it's just it just uh stand in their face. Mm -hmm. Dropping single after single. Just trying to stay yeah. consistent. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. a that's a major trying, thing. Yeah, trying to stay consistent. Yeah, that's 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 the hardest part. <clears throat> uh, staying consistent when you ain't seeing no you know, no evolving right, right, elevation, right. you know what I'm saying? Uh, if it's happening to where you can't see it, but it mm -hmm. might be happening, but yeah, just stay. That's one thing Jim always told me, though, but he said, man, even when I was in Houston, I went to stay in Houston for like five months. I talked to him FaceTime. He was like, man, get your studio at the house. Just keep making music. You got what it takes. Just keep making music. You know what I'm saying? Just me, when it comes to music, like, um, um, I can't be going through buku shit in life and focus on music. I just, you know, it's just me. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So, but you can put, you can put that. What you go through in life, I'm pretty sure, you know, you put that in your music, too. Yeah, you could, but it was more like, oh, uh, I ain't a broke rapper. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You chase, you chase your dream to me. Chase your dream, you got to have power, you know what I'm saying? To me, and I'll be like, man, I got to get my own money. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to settle for anything. Or do this sucker shit that guys have to do to get on, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was, just, it was just more of me just wanting my own bag to chase it. Sure. So when you was running with Jim, though, to go back a little bit, who were some of the people he had around him at the time? Uh, God of Pong, the Jim got some solid niggas around him. Pong, is that Pong from, um... 7.30. Okay, okay. 7.30, Pong, Freaky, uh... That's what it used to be. It used to be me, Pong, God of, uh... If Freaky come on the road, uh, the... It used to be a little tight click, like when you know what I'm saying, or whatever city you hit, mm -hmm. whoever you fuck with in that city, they'll come aboard, you know what I'm saying? But I met some sound of niggas. And still, still this day, money handsome. Still, still this day, still, you know, talk to them or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I met some sound of niggas on that, on that run with Jim.